Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the steps involved in the standardization of an achievement test. Before going to that, let's have a definition of an achievement test. According to Bestian Khan, achievement test attempt to measure what an individual has learned his or her present level of performance. Most tests used in schools are achievement tests. Achievement test can be classified into standardized and non-standardized or teacher-made achievement tests. Here is the pictorial representation of the classification of achievement test. Standardized achievement tests are those achievement tests that are standardized that is passed through a process of standardization in their development or construction. Standardized tests are constructed by test construction specialists. This often take long time to construct. These tests are called standardized because they are listed and scored according to specific and uniform procedures. The results of standardized tests can be used for comparison. Examples of a few available standardized achievement tests are California Achievement Test, the Comprehensive Test of Basic Skills, the Stanford Achievement Test Series, Payboy Individual Achievement Test, Kaufman Test of Educational Achievement. The process of developing a standardized achievement test occurs in four phases. They are phase 1 planning, phase 2 construction, phase 3 reviewing and phase 4 validation. Now let's have a look into the processes involved in each phase. So the first phase planning. Here we are doing identification of the purpose, objectives and scope of the test, defining the target group, reviewing the current curriculum, taking decision about type and format of question, length of test, number of questions, time limit of test completion, mode of scoring, preparation of blueprint. The second phase is the construction phase. In this phase, the test constructor is preparing and writing the test items. The requirements of writing the test items are The test constructor should have complete mastery over the subject matter. He should be aware of the ability and intelligence level of the students. Confusion in writing items should be avoided. Test items should be arranged from easy to difficult and clear-cut instruction should be given. The third phase is reviewing, tryout and revision of the test. The rough draft of test prepared is subjected to review by a group of experts. This is done to avoid ambiguous items Avoid very easy and very difficult items. Determining the time limit. Number of items to be included in the final test. Then avoid overlapping and vagueness in the instructions. The rough draft of the test prepared and reviewed is subjected to testing and tryout. For this purpose, the test is administrated to a small group of students termed as representative sample. This is done to improve and modify language difficulty and ambiguity. Time and workability of items are observed. Then score the items of the test for carrying out item analysis.
After the first draft of the test has been administered to a representative sample of student population, the test developer carries out item analysis for weeding out the weak items. Item analysis may be defined as an analysis of the pool of the items for the diagnosis of their strengths and weaknesses resulting in the rejection of the unsuitable and retention of the suitable items helpful in the development of appropriate tool for the measurement of the concept in question. Item analysis can be both qualitative and quantitative. Items can be analyzed quantitatively in terms of their content and form and quantitatively in terms of their statistical properties. Qualitative analysis includes the consideration of content validity and the valuation of items in terms of effective item writing procedures. Quantitative analysis includes the measurement of difficulty index, discriminative power, validity and reliability. Now let's discuss the steps in item analysis. After administering this draft form of test in a representative sample, the response sheets are scored. Arrange the response sheets from the high score to the lower score. From the ordered set of response sheets, make two groups. Put those with the high scores in one group that is the top 27 percentage and those with the lowest scores that is the lowest 27 percentage in the other group. It should be kept in mind that the responses of the respondents in the middle 46 percentage of the group are not included in the analysis. For each item, count the number of respondents in each group who answered the item correctly. Now, the statistical analysis of the test items. First of all, difficulty index. The difficulty of a test is indicated by the percentage of pupils who get the item right. The formula for finding the difficulty index is R by N into 100, where R is the number of pupils who answered the item correctly, and N is total number of pupils who attempted the items. The maximum value of difficulty index is 1. The higher the difficulty index, the easier the item. Let's think logically about it. When will you get the value of a fraction a big number? When the numerator is greater than the denominator, right? In our formula, the numerator is R. That is, the number of students who answered a particular item correctly. We get the value of R a big number when more students answered it correctly. So obviously, as the value of difficulty index increases, the item will be easier. I think you understand what I mean. So the item will be easy when the difficulty index is greater than or equal to 0.67 and the item will be difficult if the difficulty index is less than or equal to 0.33. After calculating the difficulty index, we are pass on to the discriminating power. Discriminating power of an item refers to the degree to which it discriminates between the bright and dull pupils in a group. Discriminating power is calculated by the formula dp is equal to a minus b by n by 2 where a is the number of correct responses from upper group, b is the number of correct responses from lower group and n is the total number of pupils 
who attempted the item. As in the case of difficulty index, the maximum value of discriminating power is also 1. If dp is greater than or equal to 0 0.67, the item is retained. After finding the difficulty index and discriminating power of items, the final tryout of the test is done on a large sample of individuals for estimating the reliability and validity of the test. This tryout indicates how effective the test really will be when it would be administered on the sample for which it really intended. Now the last step in standardization is validation here the test constructor is estimating the reliability and validity of the test and preparing the norms of the final test and preparing the manual of the test reliability shows consistency of test scores reliability is calculated through test retest method split half method equivalent form method validity of the test refers what the test measures and how well it measures after finding the validity and reliability of the test norms are prepared to meaningfully interpret the scores obtained on the test Then preparation of manual is the last step in test construction. Standardized test assesses the rate of development of student's ability. It helps in diagnosing the learning difficulties of students. It also helps the teacher to assess the effectiveness of his teaching and school instructional program. So with this all, I would like to sum up the presentation. I hope you have enjoyed and learned about standardization of an achievement test. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe and leave a comment below. Thank you.